I considered starting this vlog off in a different spot, but why ruin a good thing, right? It's Friday afternoon. It is officially an afternoon where I get to go on holidays. My boys are on screens. I've prepared dinner, kind of, but Friday's an easy dinner night. And I am in my comfy top and in bed and now I'm going to <gasps> start this. My sister, the serial killer. It just sounds so intriguing. And this is on the women's prize long list as well. So very excited to check it out. Um, the premise of this book is that her sister is a serial killer, I guess. She's killed three of her boyfriends, I think it says on the back. And she helps to clear them up, clean up the mess. And she starts to freak out because her sister starts to date a doctor at the hospital that she works at. And she's, she fancies this doctor. So she totally doesn't want him killed, obviously. And her sister's a little bit crazy by the sounds of it. So I guess she has to intervene. So it's a really short, easy book. I mean, look at this text I yeah I'm thinking I'm gonna fly through it and I have a couple of hours now where I can really sink into it so yeah I wonder if I can get this read tonight should I set a challenge should I set a timer maybe I will I don't even know what the time is but anyway I'll log that on here and let's see whether we can um yeah read this in one night I've never done that before I hope those children play along with this idea. Okay, let's give it a go. I'll talk to you soon. Opening lines mean a lot to me. I really need a good opening line. And I mean, this is great. I had hoped I would never hear those words again. Makes me go, what the hell? She's killed before? This is nuts. So yeah, really loving this first page. Okay, I'm gonna get stuck into it. <laughs> Second chapter, Bleach, is just so devoid of emotion. This woman is cleaning up this man's blood after her sister has murdered him. Granted, it's happened before, but I don't, I don't think that would take the fear out of it. She's not angry. She's just tired. And she's annoyed because she was just about to eat when her sister called. So now she's going to get home and her food's cold. So there's no fear. There's no disgust there's no worry about being caught like holy crap this is completely devoid of any normal human emotion around murder how bizarre anyway People. right just checking in we're an hour in i had a few little interruptions little ones um, I'm on page 57, so this is going to be full of spoilers again, because I'm buddy reading it with you, I'm chatting to you about it. Um, what's really struck me is the um, sister, what's her name? Here's another little interruption, just wait, sorry about that. Anyway, so the sister's name is Aula, and she's the one that kills everyone. And it's kind of like she's the spoiled brat of the family. She doesn't have to do anything. She's beautiful and stunning and she's gotten by with being beautiful and stunning and doing nothing else. And her sister who cleans up after her, Karidi, just kind of plays off the fact that she's killing these people because she's spoilt. And like she's doing some research about what serial killers are and apparently if you murder three people you're considered a serial killer so there you go her sister is a serial killer and she's kind of doing you know having flashbacks about the guy's face that she just threw in a river and all that sort of stuff but it's it's not like she's really worried about her sister's mental health she just kind of day to day runs with her and and forgives her spoiled ways it's really bizarre it's like nobody's really seeing that there's something really wrong. There's something really wrong here. Yeah, we're all just going about our day to day and she's trying to get the knife off her, but she refuses to give it up. But that's okay. You know, like, what's going on? Anyway, the sister has met the hot doctor. So 
we'll see what happens now. Okay, there's my hourly update. It's 4.30 now, so I'll keep reading. <laughs> snuggle down into my reading for the next couple of hours. Things always crop up, like my mum calling for the last hour. Um, I'm on page, what number is that? 136. What's happened since I've last spoken to you? I've got some notes. Yeah, so there's daddy issues, right? So daddy was a violent man. He's dead now and they stood over him and watched him die. He died of a heart attack or something in front of them while he was being abusive physically with them. So I'm thinking some, you know, psychological revenge killings are going on in her sister's brain. Um, another man has just died, by the way. Drug overdose this time, no stabbing. So not much blood to clean up. So from Karidi's point of view, her sister, lives in a world where she gets everything that she wants and it just happens to her because she's beautiful and that's just the way it's always been. Everybody's always on her side. Everybody tells Karidi to protect her sister. So she's got that ingrained in her head. And she had to do that because of her, her dad was abusive. Um, and when Karidi approaches her, which is very rare, mind you, she kind of skims around the idea that, you know, like this is a criminal act and she doesn't really bring it up often. I mean, it would be at the forefront of every conversation for me, let me tell you. She thinks that her sister, because she's just gotten everything her own way all the time, that she doesn't really understand that she won't be able to talk her way out of this one. She doesn't really understand that she'd ever be caught. And right now they're being interrogated by the police and she just woos them over with her charm and with her beauty and whatever. So... Um, Karidi often thinks about telling her mum, well not often, she has once, but she plays out the way that conversation goes and she runs it as if it's something like, as, as, you know, small as her stealing her clothes or something like that. Like the conversation has always gone, what did you do to affect the situation? Your sister must be innocent. It has to be something that you've done. So she doesn't want to approach her mum about it either. So yeah, she's playing through all these things, but it's not really causing her so much drama that it's, it's she can't go to work or she's still living her day-to-day -day life. They just celebrated her sister's birthday with a big party. Um, you'd think that she'd go to the police, especially now another guy is dead. So that's four, mind you. Um, yeah, you think that she would go to the police, especially also now that her love interest is really in love with her sister and they're together and he's besotted by her. So, I mean, he's going to die soon. It's, you know, it's inevitable. She's killed the last four. It's going to happen again. So, yeah, I don't know what she's sitting on this information for. She's getting her car examined by the police. The police are interrogating her like she's right in the middle of it and her sister's just swanning around. But I guess that's how her life plays out. It always has. There's no angst. There's no emotional outburst. There's no fear that's gripping people. Everybody's sleeping fine. Everybody's getting up and doing their jobs. You know, nothing is kind of over the top about this, but... No, not over the top. Nothing is as you would expect it to be if your sister was a serial killer. She's just still running with her every day, watching her build her fashion business. Like, it's really bizarre. It's very bizarre. There's not much emotion in it. And whether that is a product of their childhood and their abusive dad, I don't know. But it's just, it's interesting how nobody is scared of their for their lives. Like, like just nobody's worried. Everybody thinks they're going to get away with this. Okay, so what's the time? I think it's about six o'clock. So I've done all the phone calls. I've answered the text messages. I've set the kids up. I'm going to get back into reading. I've got under 100 pages left, so I'm sure I'm going to be able to finish this tonight. How exciting. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>
get all of this stuff out and the coma patient wakes up, which was always going to happen. But there's this really great scene where he calls her to the room and says that he remembers and talks about his brain and, you know, she goes, well, what do you remember? Like, freaking out and really nervous. And he says, oh, I remember you like this type of popcorn. She goes, oh, phew. And then he goes, oh, yeah. And I remember your sister's a serial killer. And I actually laughed out loud. That was very cool. <laughs> Which I hope, I hope that he makes her dob her in. Or, here's a prediction, she ends up killing her sister. Am I morbid and strange, or is am I right on the money? I've only got, oh, maths again. 70 pages to go, so I'm about to find out. When you read this book, the bottom of 216 is a bombshell. I didn't think there could be any more. I just went, oh crap. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, because it's a total spoiler, but oh crap. Only maybe six pages left. I did it. It's it's seven o'clock and I finished My Sister the Serial Killer. Um this was this was a really fast, easy read. If you need to get your mojo back, if you're losing reading mojo, pick this book up. It'll help a lot. Um it's fast paced. It's bizarre. I don't, like, I've, I've given a lot of spoilers throughout this um, vlog, but I don't want to give the big spoiler at the end, and you don't think that there could be anything more, but there is. And it's funny because these two sisters are involved in something really horrible and really evil, yet you find yourself kind of rooting for them. You don't like the sister, but when the big bombshell is revealed, you understand why it happens. It's a really bizarre feeling. It screws with your mind a bit. <laughs> um, I thought this was great. I, I really enjoyed it. This is four stars for me. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And yeah, a great way to spend the afternoon if you need that little pick-me-up. So yeah, here's a little short, sharp vlog of me reading this. Spoilers throughout but I didn't I didn't let you know the big bombshell so there's there's still more to know if you watch this and, and haven't read the book it's, it really is it really is fun <laughs> when you're reading about a serial killer and murdering men kind of fun okay chat to you in the next vlog thanks for watching